Hi and welcome to this quick tool review. This time I just have a couple of items, recent acquisitions. I'm always on the lookout for machinist made tools and these beauties uh, came up for auction on eBay so I uh, immediately jumped on the opportunity. Uh, there, there's some parallel bars, uh, three different sizes, machinist made, quite beautiful. Oh, I thought the holes went all the way through. That's kind of interesting. They just uh, put holes in to lighten them up and uh, to prevent uh, corrosion and shipping. Boy, they, uh, they lubed them up something fierce. They're hardened ground. Yeah. Let's see if we can clean these guys up here. For reference, here's a six inch scale. So uh, these guys are about nine inches long for the small ones and uh, 10 inches for the bigger one. Anyways, I can't help myself when it comes to machinist made tools. Some of these things are just truly works of art. These beauties uh, will go nicely. As I mentioned, they drill and tap each end. This, uh, this one looks like it got uh, corroded in there. We're gonna see if we can clean that out. Um, other sides, definitely better. Um, and they curiously tap each side. I wonder what the use case for that was. Well, anyways, beautiful tools. Next up is a set of tools that I'm mostly showing because I got a really good deal on it. So I was looking all over the place for a set of 5C square collets holders like these guys. And uh, the going price for a small set seemed to be in the 200 plus range. If you wanted a really nice set like Hardinge, you were looking at almost $1,000 for a set with uh, 11, 11 different sizes. This set from Tormach was just over 100 much better deal so if you're in the market and looking for them uh, it's a pretty good deal and if you're wondering why i needed them i will show you what my intended use was holding tool bits in my tool and cutter grinder so this is a half inch tool tooling bit and uh, it has 5c collets and so if i want to grind these guys this is a great way to hold it in my tool and cutter grinder and grinder and fits nicely so I needed a range of them so I can do really small tooling bits, uh, high speed steel bits, all the way up to larger ones. If you were wondering what tool and cutter grinder, it's the Shars tool and cutter grinder I got quite a while ago. I reviewed it briefly and I've used it a few times since. Uh, hand holding cutting bits like in the, in the bench grinder is a little bit challenging for me. My hand eye coordination is not great so I end up screwing up the bits towards the end usually. And so uh, this was a great find and a great bargain. And you'll see there's several other people like Robin Renzetti and several others, Stefan Gottswinter, uh, that have worked on uh, the tool and cutter grinders. And uh, they show how they can be used uh, very successfully in the shop. Robin uh, Renzetti actually bought the Shars and he modified his, you ought to check out his video. Although I find that some of the shortcomings of his are not in the later models. They uh, probably took cues from what he did and improved on them. I don't have room to store things in packaging like this. I need higher density storage solutions. So I recently got this rack that holds 72 5C collets. It has two layers here that uh, screw together. Put some furring strips up on the wall and mounted it. And it's holding all my collets, my 5C, my extra 5C collets. And uh, that's where these will live uh, very shortly. Here they are in their final home. And up above them, I have a similar rack that holds R8 collets and uh, keeps them organized and easy to select. I normally keep them covered with pillowcases like you see here and just throw a magnet on to keep the pillowcase in place. That keeps dust and chips off of them because getting chips in the 5C collets would be a pain. I have a lot of duplicates of 5C collets because I've bought lots of them. That's the best way to get decent quality ones for a relatively reasonable price. So uh, anyone out there looking for a particular size, drop me a line, I might be able to help you out. Um, I definitely have a bunch of duplicates and uh, I'd like to get rid of them so I can make some space. Next up, I picked up a tool from a retiring machinist. It's a Herrig Electric Center and uh, I got this after I saw Steve Barton use his over at Solid Rock Machine Shop. Uh, the points over here need a little bit of work, uh, but we can take care of those. And uh, all in all, it's in pretty darn good shape. Let's you uh, hold something between centers over at the surface grinder and uh, gives me more options rather than just holding from one side. So this was a good find and I got a pretty decent price on it considering that on eBay, these things typically go for around $1,000. You can see over here, there's some corrosion on this 
and I'm going to need to clean that off. Start with some Scotch Brite, but I might have to dust this whole thing off on the surface grinder. It's got a pretty decent uh, hold down technique uh, for it, which is good. Uh, you can adjust where the centers are, and it came with some extra centers, so that's good. Motor smooth, and uh, it, there's a bunch of screw holes on the front of this to put your drive dog in different places, so that's uh, also interesting. And uh, anyways, this was a good find. I'm very happy to get it. And like I said, I was sort of inspired by Steve Barton over at Solid Rock Machine Shop. Definitely check out his channel. If you want to learn about surface grinding and other really cool uh, expert machinist techniques, he's the guy for you. Last but not least, the tool I got for you guys as much as myself. I figure this kind of thing is great to evaluate. It helps everybody out. Uh, it's an inexpensive solution to a very common problem. If it doesn't work, you guys aren't out any money, just me. And if it does work, then everybody wins. So uh, I always reinvest all of my YouTube earnings, which aren't very much, <laughs> definitely not very much. Um, but I invest them right back into the channel because I believe it helps everyone in the uh, community out. So uh, I picked this up off of eBay. There's a lot of different companies selling these. This particular one went for about $95. It's pretty tiny, actually. It is a pneumatic chamfering tool. And uh, I'm kind of excited about this because this is a very common problem. And there's multiple solutions for this sort of thing. But, uh, you know, I'm never sure if I've got the right one. So I'm going to try this one out and see how we like it. So it uses carbide bits. And it, uh, I ordered extra bearings. There's a pilot bearing on here that lets it run along the side of your uh, material. And then a small little insert in there, carbide insert. I ordered a few of those extra inserts. They're tiny little triangle ones, but they're some sort of odd, extra thick version of them. So they're not necessarily easy to get. So be careful when you're ordering to make sure you get the right uh, cutters for this, the right inserts. Because the normal small triangle ones are the commonly found small ones uh, are uh, not the right one. The kit comes with a wrench for the insert and a wrench to adjust the depth, which is here in millimeters by the look of it, looks of it. Can't fault the world. And they've got uh, two Allen screws to set the depth. And you can see here, I wonder where my zero reference is. <laughs> got to put that safety sticker on there. Those are very important. Without that, no one would know what to do. So you can get a pretty big chamfer. So that looks like, let's see, where's zero there? That looks really close to zero. I'm not sure that the measurements on the side here are particularly accurate. That's a tiny chamfer. Well, why don't we give this guy a shot and try it here? That's a tiny chamfer. Perhaps too tiny. This thing is quite small. I mean, I have moderately large hands, but uh, this thing really is tiny. It's pretty light, too. <laughs> I like the sticker for the arrow. There's already one in the casting, so you probably don't need the sticker that was falling off anyways. And it came with a compressor fitting, which is a nice touch. All right, let's test this guy. Oh, it looks like it's got multiple speed adjust here with exhaust down here. It says up to 30,000 RPM. You might remember this tooling plate from a couple of projects ago, and I need to chamfer these edges because they are really sharp. I was waiting for this to arrive, and it just did. First thing I noticed when I turned this guy on, yep, you need hearing protection. This thing is loud. However, it's doing a great job and it's really easy to use. Well, trivial to use with a really, really nice finish on there. So a little bit of chatter you can see on some spots where there was a climb cut. I've set it for about a millimeter chamfer, which that looks like about right. 
By the way, there was an adjustment here on the uh, scale so you could zero the scale out. Uh, my, uh, my female uh, adapter here is kind of leaking, not this thing, it's uh, my end. Uh, anyways, uh, so you can adjust the depth. Right now it's set for a millimeter and that's pretty nice. And I'm just going to go and finish off these other edges here by rotating this part. I got to tell you, it's so easy, it's scary. The only downside I can see so far is it is loud. <laughs> So this thing went from being razor sharp to nice and smooth, doing an excellent job. And that's it. Every edge of this part has just been done that quickly and that easily with a really nice finish, especially when you hold it nice and flat, you end up with a chatter free, very smooth edge. Now this is an aluminum plate. Let's see if we can do something more challenging. Here's a piece of cold rolled. Easy peasy. A little bit challenging to hold flat. There we go. There's a very nice finish right there. And that was on some cold roll. Beautiful. Let's try a smaller chamfer. All right, because this was so rounded to begin with, smaller didn't show up very well. So I'm gonna shoot for one and a half. Look at that. That's yeah, beautiful. That was climb milling, by the way. So it's trying to pull out of my hand. That's conventional. And that was, again, a beautiful finish. One and a half millimeters. Well, I think we have a winner here. Uh, it uh, functions really well. It uh, handles pretty deep cuts in steel very easily. In aluminum, you hardly notice you're going at all. Um, very adjustable, small, compact. Has a speed adjust, which I didn't play with at all because uh, I think you just run it full out all the time. I can't see why you wouldn't. But thing works extremely well. Comes with a compressor fitting, which is really interesting. Most tools do not come with that. Uh, it's small, portable, can't speak to longevity yet but it's a good design. I mean, I like the fact that they use replaceable inserts. So even with the way it comes with, you're gonna have three edges to use to rotate before you're out. Uh, I bought a couple extra inserts. Uh, remember also that the inserts are estranged. They're extra thick inserts. I don't know if that means they won't work with the normal triangle ones, but uh, the ones that this spec out are extra thick. So f count on that when you're going in. And uh, I give this thumbs up for a hundred bucks. It's very portable, again, small spaces. Um, I'm very pleased. I hope this is useful for you. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.